let's bring it in a little bit and uh, let's go over these together, make sure we have a fundamental, strong understanding of big O. As I mentioned to you, we're going to be using these all year long, and so it's important that uh, you get a good handle on these. Now, uh, what is the time complexity of a bubble sort algorithm? A bubble sort algorithm, as I had showed you before with the, um, with the picture, is basically uh, nested loops like that. And so what would be the time complexity of that, Mr. Moises? Big O of n square. That one's going to be O of n square. Now consider three loops, each with run times of n. If the loops are all nested inside each other, what would be the big O of that algorithm, Mr. Franovic? n cubed. N -cube. So now we're going to move on to the other ones. Now we have three loops. They're all dependent on n but they're in series. That means that there's one loop, another loop, and another loop. They're not connected in any way. So when that happens, what would be the big O of the resulting algorithm? Mr. Ben, it would be big O of n. So just to be clear about this, I think you understand it, but I just want to make sure. It's going to be big O of n plus n plus n, and it's going to be big O of 3n, and that's going to be 3 times the big O of n. And then you just ignore the 3, so it becomes big O of n. Uh, we want to order these. And then what would be the next one after that? n log n, right. And then what do you have after that, sir? n square, OK. n cubed, yeah. OK. Um, for some reason, sometimes students have a mental block and think that this is rising at a more rapid rate than this. This function, the bounding function for n factorial, is actually n to the n. So that's like really bad. You get an algorithm that's n factorial, you, you don't have much. OK, let's keep going. Now you're like, well, that's not fair. We don't even know Python. It, it, at this point in your computer science career, all languages are the same. It, it doesn't really matter. What do you think is happening here? OK, O of 1 or O of k, very good. And then let's go over here. What do you think is happening over here? Look at that weird, what is that? Weird, why is there like an absolute value sign? I don't know. Whatever. One of those weird languages. Uh, Mr. Schultzen, sir, what do you think is happening here? O of n. Oh, it is O of n, sir. And what do you think this loop thing is doing? What kind of search is it, sir? Uh, linear, search. linear search. OK, so that's O of n. OK, now this one is a little tricky. Um, first of all, uh, do these two have the same O of n? Okay, I'm going to prove to you that they do not. And this is the kind of stuff that you need to be able to do on your own. So let's look at this one, for example, 8 to the n. And I can rewrite this as something. That, and I can rewrite this as something so that they now are going to have the same base. What's that going to be? Mr. Orspai, what is it, sir? It's going to be 2 to the 3 to the n, like that. And this one, similarly, is going to be written as 2 to the 2 to the n, like that. Now, staying with this one, uh, Mr. Orispa has already mentioned it. We can rewrite this one as 2 to the 3n. And this one we can write as 2 to the 2n. And as I described in the last lecture that I had in my class, you can show that these two are not the same. Remember that? They're not the same. So these two are not the same big O of n. By the way, if I have this, if I have 2 to the n, and I have 2 to the n plus 1, are the, do these two functions have the same big O? They do. So here, for example, you can write this as 2 times 2 to the n. And then when I take the big O of this thing, this 2 comes outside and goes away. And so now these two have the same big O. So now, if that is the case, and these are different, which one grows faster? 8 to the n grows faster than 4 to the n. That makes sense, right? So which of these statements is true? I think that might be right. I'm going to check that. I'll get back to you make sure on that. OK, uh, let's keep going. Uh, let's look over here. Now, this one. Uh, I think this one will give us a better idea. This one, the right answer is A. G of x is big O f of x, but f of x is not big O g of x. These are not the same. OK, so this is A. 
Let's move on. Uh, I'm going to review those and come back to you again on that. Okay, uh, give an ex ex example of exponential time complexity. Okay, f of n equals 2 to the n. Okay, very good. And then this last one. They, now, this, talk about hints. This is a huge hint here. Bounding function is n to the n. So now, if I was to draw this, and who remembers properties of logs? What can we do with the exponent of a log? Apply it here so this can come over to the side. Log n like that. So this is the right answer there. Now, what do you think is happening here? It's a, it's a mess. It's a foreign language. It's, we don't know what's going on. But looking at this, this look, see this? Look at that. That's a clue right there. What's going on there? Bisection search. So what's the big O? O of log n. Okay. Now, question number 12. Uh, do these two have the same big O? Yes. They do. So basically, they are big O of each other. And when something is big O of each other, what else are they? They're the same. So are they big O? Is that yes or no? Yes. Are they big theta? Yes. And are they big omega? Yes. yes. All three are true. If I have a process that is n square, and the input is growing from 1,000 to 20,000, and the output originally was 3, what will the new output be? You're having a mental block here. It's a, it's a really easy problem, but you're having a mental block. Okay, imagine a process that's squared, right? Squared. And the input to the process grows by 20 times. What will the output to the process grow by? What would be the output now of the, of the second case? What is the, how many seconds would it be? 1,200 seconds. Is it possible for two computer programs to have the same big O algorithms, and yet one takes a lot longer than the other? Could be a number on the outside, constant, 